Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition and this series is on plant toxins where we're looking at how various plants in the diet can exert toxic effects on the human body. So I want to ask the audience a question. Do you suffer from IBS? Do you suffer from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Or do you have chronic yeast infections or candida? Well, if you do, then you probably need to watch this. This video is going to be talking about dietary oxalates. And if you don't know what oxalates are, then I recommend going to the first video to get a good introduction. So we're going to be looking at how oxalates can affect gut health. We're going to be looking at how oxalates can potentially cause a state of imbalance in the gut bacteria, referred to as dysbiosis. We're also going to be looking at how elevated oxalate in the gut can actually cause candida to go from its commensal form, which means its friendly form, and convert into a more pathogenic state. Oxalate can also disrupt the tight junction barrier in the kidney through similar mechanisms as what might happen in the gut. And it's possible that oxalate may cause leaky gut due to that. So for those people who have leaky gut, or which is technically referred to as intestinal permeability, a state where the lining of the gut wall is actually more permeable than normal and allows various things into the bloodstream from the gut that shouldn't be there. If someone has this condition, then they're actually much more likely and much more susceptible to absorbing elevated levels of oxalate. Research shows that if someone has intestinal permeability and fat malabsorption, then this increases the rate of oxalate absor absorption by a great degree. So in that sense, you can think of it like leaky gut can cause oxalate problems. However, I'm going to turn this round on its head and say that high oxalate diets which means diets high in plants which contain really high levels of oxalate can actually be the cause of gut issues. They can potentially cause leaky gut and they can lead to a state of dysbiosis. So if we're looking at how oxalate may potentially cause leaky gut, I first of all want to make it clear that um, there is no direct evidence that I know of um, showing this. However, it's a theoretical proposition based on a similar mechanism which has been shown to occur in the, in the kidneys. So let's just draw some parallels. The permeability of the gut is essentially governed by the integrity of these things called tight junctions. And tight junctions are modulated by various proteins such as zonulin and occludin. So in the kidneys, Oxalate has been shown to markedly reduce occludin proteins and zonular occludins. It can impair the tight junction barri barrier and induce paracellular permeability. Since these mechanisms are basically the same as in the intestine, which regulates the intestinal permeability, it seems fair to assume that oxalate may actually exert very similar effects thereby causing leaky gut. What this likely means is that leaky gut protocols are probably not gonna be effective. You have to look at it in a certain way that intestinal permeability is not something that necessarily needs to be healed in and of itself. In fact, intestinal permeability is merely a response. The intestinal wall or the intestinal lining essentially does what it's told. And if there is something which is overactivating the immune system, then this is gonna be the thing that is driving intestinal permeability. And if a high oxalate diet is the thing which is causing inflammation, then there's no amount of L-glutamine that you're gonna take which is gonna permanently fix that. What you would do best to do is to reduce the oxalate in your diet. What's most interesting as well is that a high oxalate diet can actually disrupt the gut bacteria to such an extent to cause a condition called gut dysbiosis. 
You see, you have various bacteria in your gut which are responsible for degrading oxalates. And they can only do this to a certain extent. In fact, when you feed them too many oxalates, the oxalate degrading bacteria have actually been found to die. Therefore, by having a high oxalate diet, you are potentially killing off some of the really beneficial bacteria in your digestive tract and causing an imbalance. So if the high oxalate diet is the cause of your dysbiosis, I really don't think an antimicrobial protocol is gonna fix that. I don't think antibiotics are gonna fix that and um, it's possible that it's actually gonna make it worse. If you have chronic yeast infections or you think that you have candida living in the gut, you might wanna think about reducing oxalate in your diet because oxalate or a high oxalate diet could actually be driving your condition. You see, when in high amounts, oxalate is not only toxic to human cells, it's not only toxic to bacterial cells, but it's also toxic to yeast, meaning candida, okay? So candida is meant to be one of the commensal yeasts in our, digestive, in our digestive tract. Ordinarily, it exists in its commensal form, which basically means that it's not doing any harm to the human body, and it contributes to the diversity of the microbiome. The problem is, is that when you give it too many oxalates, it essentially tries to protect itself. It activates a protective shift, and it goes from being its commensal form to actually turning into a filamentous hyphal form, which is a pathogenic form. And this is which produces biofilm. Okay, so in other words, Candida goes from being a good guy to a bad guy because it's been fed too many oxalates. And it's interesting that there are many people who actually suffer from chronic yeast issues that find that when they go on a low oxalate diet or they can completely cut out oxalates from their diet, that their yeast issues naturally go, at, go away in and of themselves. So if you've got chronic yeast issues or you've got candida living in the gut, taking an antifungal for candida infection caused by high oxalate diet is treating a symptom and not the cause. When we look at many antifungals, there are significant side effects. And what if it turns out that the candida is actually in some way protective? What if the candida is actually sequestering oxalate so that we're not absorbing as much into our body? These are all things that need to be considered and researched further. So to conclude, oxalate can disrupt the balance of bacteria in the gut and potentially cause dysbiosis. Oxalate can also disrupt the tight junction barrier in the kidney through similar mechanisms as what might happen in the gut. And it's possible that oxalate may cause leaky gut due to that. Oxalate also causes candida to go from its commensal form to its pathogenic form. I hope that you can see that high oxalate diet may be significantly contributing towards your gut problems. Rather than focusing on the symptom, taking an antimicrobial or an antifungal, it might be best to look at what is in your diet and to assess whether you are eating foods which are not necessarily doing your body much good. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my page. You can find me on Facebook or YouTube. This is Elliot from EO Nutrition. Thank you and see you next time.